I wanted to show you guys some of the pickups I've gotten recently that I think are some of my more cool pickups, some of my more outstanding, maybe a little different or unique pickups I've got recently. And then after this, I'm gonna have my buddy Tyler from Generation Gap Gaming pretty much take up the rest of the pickup video because he was texting me some things that he got last week and I was like, if you wanna film yourself talking about this stuff, I would be more than happy to put it on one of our pickup videos because this is some of the coolest, best stuff you could possibly get when collecting anything in the retro world. So, hope you guys stay tuned and uh, enjoy this. The first things that I got that I wanted to show you all is a couple VHS tapes. Now these are cool if you're not into VHS tapes. I know it's not for everybody. This is the Banjo-Kazooie Toys R Us one. I think it was like a promotional to be honest. I never watched this. I have seen a lot of people do videos on this type of thing, but I've never actually taken the time to watch this. The second one, and I got three and the third one's my favorite, is this Exo Squad sealed VHS copy. I just love the look and feel of this. Exo Squad is I feel like underrated. This is actually a show and a toy toy line that my brothers collected a lot for. Uh, even vividly remember uh, one Christmas in particular where we got a ton of Exo Squad toys for Christmas. Ricky found this sealed while we were in Sacramento and luckily he passed it off to me. Ricky said he was trolling me, he doesn't even want this. <laughs> I hate you, and thank you at the same time. Now my favorite VHS that I've got recently, I think this is the coolest one by far pause so I can set these down. Is this how to score more points on Nintendo games VHS by Kodak, which I never realized. So this one is really cool to me because this is one where I would say I watched these all the time when I was younger, especially the one I remember the most for some reason is we would always, probably because it was really hard, would always watch the one telling us how to beat different Mega Man games. Mega Man was not easy back then and it's not easy nowadays and I remember watching this all the time and just kind of enjoying everything that it brought to the table when explaining how to beat video games. I know My Life in Gaming, when they first started their channel, they kind of did a knockback to some of these types of videos. How to beat this game and this game. If you've never seen any of these, you gotta check them out. It's really cool. It's to tell you how to get you know more points on video games, how to beat levels, how to do certain things. Almost like a virtual Nintendo power. And this one has Castlevania 2, Double Dragon, WrestleMania, Blaster Master, and Team TNT surf designs, uh, all games I really love. There's a motorcycle literally revving its engine in front of my house. You'll need money, that's the little hearts, to buy stuff. You can go to the woods and kill monsters, or wait until night. Then you can kill the ghouls in the village. In every village, there's a signpost. Stop and read it. And he's gone. Uh, some games that I really love and games that I definitely spent a lot of time with back in the day while playing the NES. So I love this one, so happy to have it. Uh, love the sticker, 30 day guarantee, previously viewed sticker on it from Blockbuster on the back as well. The basic look with the Blockbuster sticker inside. Fantastic and beautiful. This next item is super cool and it's an NES. Now what's so special about an NES, besides it being a great console, is this one in particular is a while back when Ricky and I and Gabba were game hunting at the swap meet, we saw the Sega Genesis that had this sticker on it that said it came from like a video game police locker from evidence back in the early 2000s. We didn't get it. Look at that, it came from a police department. <laughs> when are you gonna find, ever find an, another Genesis that has the ev evidence, that came from evidence? And then we were regretting not getting it and Ricky ended up going back and he ended up finding a Sega Genesis, an Xbox, and an NES. He gave, he kept the Sega Genesis one, he gave the Xbox one to Gabo, and he gave me the Nintendo one. And as you can see on the back, it says County of Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. The date is March 18th, 2009, so not too long ago, but evidence type, evidence, source, other model, NES, serial number. It even has who it was booked by, Brandon Painter. So I actually talked to a police officer not too long ago I was running like I do every day and I saw a police officer and I kind of stopped him to ask him I'm like hey I found some old video games and they have this and that on them and he said they were probably just pulled from somebody's house but he said I'm actually welcome to call this number sometime and maybe they'll give me some info if they can so I think I might do that sometime and maybe even make a video on it I just found this at Savers for 99 cents and it's Nintendo Power Volume 44 a bonus issue and that might seem like nothing to you guys and nothing super cool but I think this is a really 
special Nintendo Power because it has all of the inserts inside of it. And a lot of Nintendo Powers have some really cool inserts on the side, but this one has a few things that I really think are special and unique that make it really cool, especially to all be intact. The first one would be the Star Fox like origami half sticker, half foldable collector's piece. You can make a Star Fox R-Wing and this has all of these in here in perfect condition. It has the tips on how to do it and it looks like nobody's ever even touched this, maybe even barely flipped through these pages. So I don't think I'll actually make it. I debated doing that, but I don't wanna ruin it as well. The last thing, which is my favorite thing that's in this Nintendo Power that made it really cool to me and really special that uh, I never see in my Nintendo Powers. I've always seen them ripped out or used and that is, mm, cue me trying to find the page. Besides the trading cards being here in perfect condition as well, but it has the stickers for your controllers and even your Game Boy. These are the stickers that would go on the controllers. Look at this, 1993 with the, looks like a, maybe ringing in the New Year version. Uh, one of the circuit boards for the NES controller, a very space-esque SNES controller sticker. I love these. I am always hyped when I see these on old Nintendo or Super Nintendo or even Game Boys, Game Boy Advances on any of the controllers or cartridges or any of that. I love seeing this kind of stuff, but I never see them still intact inside of the magazine. Magazine. So this one, and yes, all the other posters are still inside, the Mario paint uh, brochure in there, even you know the, the survey that you take is still in there. This is one of my more favorite issues because it has so much in it as far as extras, but the fact that it's all still in here is really cool to me. <sighs> Got these about a month ago, but never showed anybody. And that is two Small Soldiers 1998 toys by Hasbro. Uh, these are large. I never was super into Small Soldiers, but I always definitely loved the look of their toys. They're big, they stand out. Uh, when I found them at Savers, they were sitting next to some large Star Wars toys. And even next to those that were very large, these just felt so much more prominent, so much more bulky, so much more beefy. As far as toy lines go, I don't necessarily collect these like I would like but I've always taken an interest to seeing them when I see other collectors get them. So I was happy to see them for like $2 each. I texted my buddy Juan, Secret Game Stash. I'm like, I don't collect for these yet. Is this a good deal for these? I, I want to get them anyway because of the price. And I watched Toy Soldiers a few times. It's toy soldiers. I watched Small Soldiers a few times when I was younger. I liked the look and he's like, dude, that is a great deal. You gotta get these. So I picked them up. Uh, let me know if you collect for these at all. I'd like to know more. Oh, and also I think they go for a decent price. I did end up looking after that. I think maybe 20 some bucks each. I might be off, but I think that or maybe more. This next one I picked up from the SAC Gamers Expo in Sacramento and that is Killer Queen Black. You know what, for you guys, I'll do 20. One each for you guys, because you guys are the best. On the Nintendo Switch. Now this, when it was announced during Nintendo Direct, it might have been a Nindies Direct or a regular one, I can't remember. But I remember friends I was with and even some people online, there was a lot of confusion. Like, oh, why are you so excited about this? Uh, I don't know if I would say this necessarily went under the radar, but this is a fantastic uh, couch co-op game. I think there's online as well. I've been playing it on couch co-op, so I didn't even try out the online. I'm pretty sure there's online. But uh, one of the better couch co-op games that I've played in a long time, I regard this game and Samurai Gun as two of my favorite games to play with multiple people that I feel like kind of are a little bit underrated. I know more people talk about this one, but definitely worth getting. I think it goes for like 25 bucks. I know I got it for cheaper, but I would say this is, I mean, if you're a co-op kind of guy, I'd pay up to 40 bucks for something like this if that was the price. The absolute last thing before Tyler takes over and kind of blows your guys' minds with what he got. Uh, this, I think it's pronounced Bishu Zipper NES Controller. Uh, these come in quite a few different colors. They're actually one of my favorite layouts and looks, not as far as performance goes, but as far as looks, one of my favorite uh, aesthetics and visual appeal, as far as a Nintendo controller goes. Uh, the blue one, I think there's a red or a pink one, but I was gifted this at Sacramento Gamers Expo by a fan of the show. Really cool for him to give me this because I have other colors for this, but I do not have the yellow. So I wanted to thank you very much for that. And uh, now I'm gonna pass it to Tyler, Generation Gap Gaming, uh, awesome channel. Channel, awesome friend of ours but again he was he did not ask to do this he was just texting me like we text each other and he was showing me what he got and I'm like dude you got to film this for my show if possible and put together a little video and he did for all of you guys so check out this video uh, also check out his channel fantastic fantastic channel here we go Tyler generation gap gaming I don't know whatever Hey Riff and the rest of the Pixel Game Squad, it has been a crazy week here at my house. I got my very own first pinball machine and arcade cabinet to have on display at my house. And what's even crazier is I didn't even get it for myself. 
My wife took it upon herself to save up money from her own business to give me my all-time holy grail arcade and pinball machines. She wanted to surprise me for Christmas and I had no idea that she was doing it. She's heard me talk about these games casually for years and I guess she really was listening. So the pinball machine she got me was the original Twilight Zone machine from Bally. And I actually played it for the first time at a local movie theater on one of our first dates, so it kind of has a little bit of sentimental value for us. I mean, just look at this cabinet. This thing is packed full of stuff. You got this working clock, you got this gumball machine that you can load. I mean, this game is so complex. All around this door in a rectangle here, you can light up all these different special bonus combinations that I'm still having to learn myself. But what the greatest thing is, is that I am a huge Twilight Zone fan. I love the original series. I've watched them on Netflix dozens of times. And I appreciate it even more now because there's tons of little hidden references from the series all through this. I mean, of course you got Rod Serling up here. You have the doll that floats in through the intro. You see the one-armed bandit slot machine. You see the masks up there on the wall. You see the curio shop cabinet from that one episode where they could travel through time. I mean, just the list goes on. If you're a Twilight Zone fan, I mean, this cabinet is perfection. And what I really can't believe is that this is an original cabinet, and I think it was first released back in 1993, but I mean, the condition of this thing is amazing. It's almost perfect. But this thing was a beast to pack down the steps. Apparently, this is one of the wider and larger pinball machines that you can get. This thing weighed over 320 pounds, so me and my neighbor got it down the steps, but we have it up and running now, but man, it was a terror to get down here. Now before we talk about my all-time holy grail arcade machine that I got, let's talk about another crazy thing that happened this week. And I like how I keep referring to this big secret reveal for my arcade cabinet, even though it's sitting right behind me right now. But for real, right after I got the Twilight Zone machine set up, my aunt texted me and she said, hey, I have a friend that's doing a local estate sale and they have a couple of arcade machines and I just thought you may be interested. So she sends me a picture of it and I'm like, okay, we'll see what it is. And I look and it's two arcade cabinets. One is a uh, Operation Wolf, the machine gun game. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And the other is a Simpsons arcade game. I mean, how could I pass this up? I mean, I figured the prices were gonna be outrageous and everything. But, and I don't like to talk about price or anything like that here on the channel, but I can tell you, I looked these games up on eBay and if I bought them outright on eBay, I got them for over 90% off. So I really couldn't pass this up. Although trying to move these cabinets from a second floor game room down a narrow flight of steps was quite the challenge. Big shout out to my cousin Shane, my dad, and my father-in-law for helping me get them back here to the house because, man, they were tough to deal with too, especially the Simpsons arcade machine where it had the four controllers, so you guys are awesome. But yeah, I got the Operation Wolf game here home. It works great. It still even has the great recoil. The gun maneuvers properly. I mean, this is just amazing. And check out the Simpsons arcade game. Oh my gosh, I played this game so many times at a local bowling alley growing up. The only issue we had was that on the joystick display, some of it was kind of peeling up. So I found a replacement decal on eBay and I got that and my dad and I actually put it on this weekend and I think it looks pretty good. So now I have three great machines down here in my basement and I'm getting my all time holy grail arcade cabinet coming the next day. All right, so yes, I was super pumped about the Twilight Zone machine and I absolutely love it and it is amazing. But the arcade cabinet my wife got me is my true holy grail machine that I have wanted since the seventh grade. And that is an original Dragon's Lair arcade cabinet. This is a refurbished 1983 original Dragon's Lair cabinet. Just look at the displays, the side decals. The cabinet itself is in such great condition. I love the scoreboard that sits just above the monitor. The display looks great, the animation is great. Don Bluth knocked it out of the park with this, just like he did with all his animations. I obviously didn't get to experience the initial release of Dragon's Lair in 1983, because I would have only been a year old. But this game was groundbreaking. I'm pretty sure it was the first game that you had to use two quarters to play the game and people would put a second monitor on top of the machine for all the people waiting in line to play it to be able to see. You had this fully animated feature film starring your hero Dirk the Daring and you would control him with his sword or the directions on the joystick to guide him through the outside of the castle all the way to the final battle with Sanj the Dragon. 
it was ultimately a game of trial and error, and I can understand where some people had a big beef with it, but I mean, I love this game. I remember the first time I actually saw it. I was probably about four or five years old, and I was over in Richlands, Virginia with some of my cousins around the holidays, and we went to their local arcade in their mall. And it was your typical arcade where it was real dark in there and seedy, and you know how arcades just had that smell and that vibe about them. I mean, that's what I'm thinking whenever I see this game. And I saw the cabinet. I, I remember seeing the side art for the first time with the dragon peeking around and then Dirk has his sword there. And I was like, well, this game looks pretty cool. Even as that young, I can remember that verbatim seeing that. I just remember it so vividly. And I remember that I was so short that I couldn't see the monitor because the monitor was kind of recessed down and I had to go find a little bucket somewhere in the arcade and stand up on it to be able to see it. And I remember I was like, wow, this is just like a cartoon. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, I don't remember if it was one or two quarters to play, but it was well past its prime at this point. And I remember playing it and I was too young to really grasp what you had to do, like timing it right. I do remember like I thought the game was broken because I would do things and it wouldn't move. I was just so little and I thought that the game would just automatically respond to me moving. So I didn't fully appreciate it, but it still left a lasting impression on me. But when I really got obsessed with Dragon's Lair was in seventh grade, I got Dragon's Lair for the Sega CD. And I had a Game Secrets book for the Sega CD that would help guide you through Dragon's Lair. And so I fully got to experience and see it from start to finish. And I just love the animation and being able to play a live action animated game at my house on the Sega CD. I was just amazed by it. In seventh grade, we had to do a couple art projects and both art projects that I did centered around two of the characters from Dragon Slayer. I did the Lizard King and Dirk the Daring. I mean, I'm not an artist by any means, but this just shows you my true passion for Dragon Slayer or sadness or nerddom or whatever you want to call it. I have Dragon's Lair on about any medium you can think of. I have it on DVD, I have it for the Game Boy, I have it for the NES, I have it for the PC, I even have it on Blu-ray, which by the way, the Blu-ray is awesome. If you are a fan of this game, you really need to pick it up. I'm just so happy with all these machines. The Simpsons, Operation Wolf, the Twilight Zone Pinball, and Dragon's Lair. Two of my ultimate all-time Holy Grail games are now in my basement for good. And it's all thanks to my wife. So it was a good thing I picked her up two Starbucks gift cards this year instead of just one. Now for real, thank you babe, that was awesome and I'll cherish these games forever and you know I will. I know I rambled for a little bit but I just love these games so much. Till next time, G3 out. That's how you do an intro. Oh, did my hair look like that the whole time? I'm just out of the shower, it looks like I'm sweating. Okay, baby.